Hi all, Shane here at Land 67 uh, It's coming to you with a, um, an inbox for a few of a kit I was very excited about. Um, this is something quite new for me. Uh, this is Trumpeteers 135th scale T62 era mod 1972. Uh, kit number, where is the kit number on this? Kit number 01549er. So yeah, um, this is kind of my first time um, foraying into post-war, Cold War if you will, Soviet armour. Um, this is the Iraqi um, edition. So um, I picked this, uh, this could easily be a Syrian armour piece as well. Um, so you can weather these quite severely. Um, anyone who says uh, modern armour doesn't weather up like World War II, uh, that is, well, bullshit. Uh, they do. And uh, it's so easy to type up uh, Syrian army armour or tanks and uh, you'll see the GoPro and you'll see how severely weathered they are. Anyway, a little rant aside, this is um, a really nice kit. I'm going to try to do a bit of a an inbox review. My knowledge of these kits isn't great. So, um, the kit was released copyright 2014, so it came out this year. Uh, we have two or 620 plus parts, uh, length to uh, 286 millimeters, so 260 or 286 millimeters, and width 95 millimeters. So a nice, decent sized kit. Uh, we have. Um, uh, a little image of the tank, we get a metal barrel and photo etch so you could build this kit into a very nice um, model right out of the box you might want to add a little bit of wet, um, wiring I know for the fuel cells on the side of these vehicles but most of us will have access to that anyway we have a little bit of history on the vehicle um, which was meant to be kind of the Mod 72 was a, an attempt to modernise the 62s to deal with perceived modern uh, NATO threats. So the, a new weapon, uh, I believe it was a 150mm UT-5 that fired, uh, I believe it was like, a, what's the word for them, a Sabo style round. So um, they were pretty, pretty fast in their day, but then they quickly became out, outsourced. Anyway, that's enough talking, let's see what we get in the box. Again, I'm just going to get the camera over here. So. so, the box, as you can see, is chock-a-block, full of um, parts. So what I'll do is, I'll move the camera over now in a few minutes so you can have a better look. So, I was kind of... One thing I don't like about my reviews is you never really get to see the quality of the parts, so I'm going to bring the camera in closer now. Right, so we have our standard advertisements, which some guys bitch about having them. I don't actually like having this, it keeps you up to date. Apparently there's a new um, rocket launcher based on a T-72 chassis. That'll be an interesting case uh, when that comes out. Uh, a few other bits and pieces, including the the uh, the model, or including one of the model itself, which is just basically they print these out and just throw them to all their kits. Our colour callouts. So this doesn't even give you the name of the army. It's for it's just a standard uh, um, desert scheme. Colour callouts are for Mr. Colour or Mr. Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamia, and hum Humbro. So. Um, there's only two colours you really need uh, to paint this model up. That's it. So, let's have a look at the instruction manual. So again, we have a, an image of the, the model, or a, an artist impression of the model. Our icons, or our legend of keys, if you will. A little explanation of uh, dactyl application. And we'll see how many steps we have. It is an 18 step kit. We have a full um, sprue layout with the parts numbered, which is nice. You just have to 
look kind of closely because the numbering is quite small but again nothing to get too concerned about how many sprues two four six twelve twenty four sprues in this in total I believe maybe a little bit more but again you're actually in dyslexic to count never a good idea so again it begins with your standard uh, lower hull road wheels very clear it does have you drilling holes so make sure you pay attention so you don't I've, I've often overlooked those and then gone caught out like when I get to the end of the build and everything's buttoned up so again stay uh, stay switched on again you drill more holes in the um, the upper hull for mounting of the era blocks tracks are link link to link which I personally like some people don't I find link to links um, my personal favourite type of track because you just have more control over them hatches can be um, modelled open or shut uh, photo etch for the engine grills very kind of run of the mill type of armour nothing really to cry up like uh, to get excited about um, the uh, locations of the era blocks are very clearly laid out you should not uh, be led astray here they uh, colour code them and clearly mark what parts are what so just uh, take your time there and you shouldn't have any problems again the is very quick no interior detail whatsoever in this case um, shouldn't be a problem if you're going to model it button down or have crew men in the hatches um, so details it's pretty it seems to be pretty nice very clear again so it's very clear um, um, instructions. You're, you're not going to get led astray. You're not going to have the problems that you do with dragging at times. Okay. So that's the instructions. Very clear. Shouldn't uh, be a problem. Okay. So how do I want to do this? Right. Start pulling out screws. So here are your tracks. Uh, two brack bags with six, or should I say, one bag has four sprues and the other bag has three. Um, I would have preferred if it was equal numbers so you knew exactly how many tracks you need per size. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, there is no pin marks on these. That is good. So you don't have to do any sanding on the, the treads. Though there is um, several points you're going to have to cut off and sand. But again, no pin marks, that's a plus. Mold in a nice kind of tan colour. Solid horns on or track horns or guide horns I don't know if that is the norm for Russian armour as I my knowledge is not that great of Cold War armour but I will start somewhere so that's the tracks let's have a look see ok so the natural progression is to have a look at the row wheels very nice detail very nice detail I'm not seeing any flash I'm not seeing any any pin marks very nice delicate parts are protected in light foam which is always nice to see that is something I really like about Trumpeter they actually take the time just to add that extra touch to protect the parts so that, that's nice shows they care ok so nice there again nothing really to write home about So a smaller sprue we have a um, nice detail on the ammo drums for the Dushka machine gun or whatever the hell it's called their version of the 50 cal um, mud flaps again detail is nice N it's not too crisp I, I wouldn't say it's soft but I wouldn't call it really crisp either um, it's kind of in the middle uh, it's well it's, it's enough for our means um, a little bit of flashing here and there a tiny amount but especially on what looks like the uh, commander's size but again it's not enough to make this kid a negative okay I don't want this kiss I don't want this review dragging on any longer um, upper hole uh, note cast textures so you might want to add your own again consult your 
your um, consult your references third ring is separate uh, the canvas on the blast bag of the on the gun mask is actually pretty well um, replicated that should take some nice dry brushing and washes to make it stand out from the fable gives you two bow plates one what looks like either mounting brackets for era and or maybe for um, mine plows or rollers so okay nice and simple all the pin marks are on the inner faces of the parts so they're not going to be seen which is good but to show that they were thinking as they designed this model uh, this is part of the commander's cupola and rear deck again detail is nice a little bit on the soft side in places I've noticed you know it doesn't have the same crispness as a Tamiya or a dragon but still very finely detailed nonetheless just a little bit I, I, I wouldn't say soft I'd call it blurred slightly blurred that would be the best way of describing it era blocks again nicely detailed um, nothing really here to uh, really write home about blank on the back so um, there you go you can probably paint them up in different colours too because I, I've seen era blocks sometimes don't match the armour of the fagel that can be a nice way of just adding a bit of colour to an otherwise monotone fagel ok on to a rather large screw gives you a gun mantlet without the blast bag the external fuel tanks they're nicely detailed a uh, little bit of flash on some parts here not not a lot not, not nothing that a quick run of a uh, a pass or two of a standing stick will not rectify on ditching log is very um, nicely um, replicated with a nice grain effect So yeah, so far I'm liking the quality. Um, there are pin marks on the bottom of the fenders, but you probably will not see them at all. Especially too with the big panels of era that hanging off the skirts. You're in definitely not going to see the underside of that. Okay. So this is the last of the big sprues. Third is included, and actually there actually is molded on detail or molded texturing, which is quite nice. Um, I don't know how well you can see that, but you can kind of see it there, yes. Very nice moulded detail, or moulded texture, should I say. I do not know how well um, you might want to maybe augment that by adding your own, just make sure you don't lose it, but I'm pretty sure that will, be, that will remain visible even after a few layers of paint. Here are the big, large um, bit of bone, unfortunately. These are the large... Um, side skirts for the uh, for Eero blocks. This piece has a bit of a bow in it, but again, in a bit of gentle bending, you'll be able to take it out. More Eero blocks and mountings for them. And that's pretty much the end of the, the big sprues. And then we're going to move on to the, the smaller sprues. This is something I really like. So you get um, hard plastic ru um, rubber rims for tires. I really like this. I uh, remember Norm mentioned it in one of his um, T72 or um, or 64 or 62 uh, refuse that you can model these. If this was a knocked out fagel, you can leave the um, the rubber uh, tracks off as these would melt away. So that's a really nice thing. Also, if you want to show that's worn, you can take your Dremel and start pitting these. So that's a really nice um, addition. I really like that. Well done, Trumpeter. Okay, and then just onto the small fittings. Okay, so here's the lower hole with the brass turn barrel, which is a really nice addition. I'm really happy with that. Saves me having to go out because I couldn't actually find a bloody barrel for this um, when, I, when I had a quick look through um, Lucky Model. Detail on the bottom, again a bit simplified, but it is there, which is always a good thing. Uh, a little strand of copper wire for the tow uh, for the tow cables. Nice detail here, no flashing, no pitting. Good, good. Okay, what do we have here? These look like um, engine deck mounts. Again, detail is okay. Um, seems a little bit 
on the soft side in places, but not uh, not enough to break the kit if you get me. So yeah, not too bad. Okay, here's the Dadushka, or the hell you call it, the uh, the Russian equivalent of the 0.5 or 50 cal. Nicely detailed, bit delicate. I can uh, you want um, take care of moving this from the sprue because uh, that might snap. Very nice detail nonetheless, though. Okay, so that's that's nicely reproduced, produced, and then uh, where's the other? Yeah, okay, and the last sprues, clear parts for periscopes and headlamps. Okay, nicely done. Then the pig's eye, but grand. And then here's our small photo etch um, fret. A couple of grills, nothing really here. That's too crazy, though interestingly enough it's actually dated 2007 here so this is a 7 year old's uh, fret so obviously they're taking parts, that might explain why some of the, the plastic looks a bit soft they're probably using plastic from some of their earlier kits and then just to top, top it all off I bought some uh, bloody uh, surface primer um, kind of desert yellow for priming the model which yeah not really here to show off but yeah so surface primer uh, desert tan base or tan base so that's going to be my my basis for this geez they really do put a lot of wrapping into this there we go so that's going to be uh, one of the colours. I'm going to start mixing various browns to denote it a bit differently. So that's the um, the uh, Trumpeter T7 or T64 Mod 72. Uh, pretty good kit and all. Um, would recommend it. Uh, should be a pretty interesting project. Looking forward to getting work on it. I won't be going near this until the Striker. Uh, F18 and BF109 are done. Once they're done, I uh, will get cracking on this kit. Okay, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Happy modeling. I want you for those buses. Bye bye.